Hey everybody, this is Dave coming to you from the Gaming Cave and today we're going to continue our playthrough of Midway Solitaire Deluxe Edition from Decision Games. So in the first video I shot we did the setup of the game, nothing's changed, it's all still here ready to go. So we're going to jump right into this thing and let's see how she works. Now I'll tell you this. I have not played the game from beginning to end. I kind of wanted to do that. We'll learn as we go a little bit about strategy, but I played a little, I played a few turns to make sure I had the mechanics right. And I think I do. So maybe a couple times we have to go back to the rules and refer if we run into something I haven't run into before, but hopefully this will uh, play out. Okay. All right. So like I said in my video, I'll be using this sequence of play to help us with the Japanese operations and then I have the game's sequence of play for the US Navy. But the first thing we do, we have our cup and so give her a stir and we pull the first marker out and it is ho ho Yamamoto. So that's not the guy I wanted to see because <laughs> this creates a problem right out of the gate I do believe. Okay, Yamamoto. Both the uh, Port Mosby and Solomon routes are activated. Conduct operations for IJN forces, including the U.S. Navy reaction segment, but not the U.S. Navy phase on the Moresby route. Then the Solomon route. After both routes have conducted their operations, conduct the U.S. Navy and administrative phase. During the administrative phase, place the marker in the operations marker already played display. Okay, so we do the, we're going to do our segments here, but we don't do our, and we do including the U.S. Um, reaction segment, but not the U.S. Navy phase. So up here at the top, we're going to, we're going to play all the way to here and then we stop on the US Navy phase we do that at the end so first we do Port Moresby and then we do the Solomons okay so we're gonna be down here and so the first thing we have to do is the IJN search attempt okay so we're looking to determine if there's an unspotted US Navy task force is within three spaces of an IJN base. One, two, well, he's in Australia. Um, two spaces of a task force, they haven't moved yet, and all other. Okay. And this is on the Solomon route, which we know he's out of range. One, two, three. That's Australia's out of range, too. So coming out of here, it's one, two on the Rabal. And then three right there. Okay, so they're not in range, so we don't have to do anything there. So now we do this, the uh, Imperial Japanese Navy Task Force Movement Table. We roll 1d6 for each task force. So for truck, we have a covering task force and an invasion task force coming out of, not for truck, coming out of truck for Port Mores, Moresby. So we have an invasion and a covering force. So we have to roll. So we use this table right here. It's a D6 and it's broken up into the um, carrier strike force, task force, the support, guard, covering, and main bodies, and then the invasion. Okay, so we're gonna roll for the covering first. And our roll is a two. Okay, so a two for the covering force is one space. So the covering force moves one space right there. Now we roll again for the invasion force. And the invasion force goes two. And two for the invasion force is also one space. So they're both on the same space. So I don't stack them on top of each other. I usually just set them side by side. Okay, that's their move segment. So now we go to the US Navy reaction segment. 
So we can launch carrier based, not land, bombers and fighters against the spotted task force. Well, I don't have any spotted task force. I can launch, oh, wait a minute. Before we do that, here in red, C11.0 to determine if you must pick one incident marker. Those task force moved, so I have to pick an incident marker to see what happens. So we shake this one up, and this cup's a little harder to get out of, and we pull on incident marker, and it says incident, calm seas. So nothing happens, no effect. Okay, now I got that done. Always tend to forget that one. I gotta try to remember that. All right, launch carrier based. I'm just checking my um, IGN movement segment. Task force must end movement. Okay, if at the beginning of subsequent home space, yep, okay. Launch carrier based, not land bombers and fighters. I don't have any. Launch um, naval aircraft fighter and land aircraft for cap missions. So I can launch my cap. I have a P 39. Now, the trick on this one is, how do you determine if he's in cap or not? Usually down here I can put them separate, but it's a little bit congested. But I have a bomb group, a B-25 group, and I have a, I have my P-39. So I'm going to put my P-39s on cap. So I'm going to put them like on top of these counters here to represent that they're flying combat air patrol there. Okay, so now we go... Now we move the marker up to IGN, IJN Air Unit Launch Segment. Okay, for spotted U.S. Navy Task Force and or U.S. Navy bases, determine the missions each available unit air units will fly. Player may examine unspotted IGN Task Force to determine units. So the only ones I got to look at real quick is the covering force to see if there's a carrier in there one two because they're in range most likely and there is it's the junio so the junio has a range of three on their bombers and four on their fighters okay so at air bases they're always spotted air bases are always spotted okay for each spotted u.s navy task force and or u.s bases determine the missions each available units will fly so on the Junio, where's she at? Right here. We're gonna put his fighter and bomber. We're gonna just gonna set them here on the board. We're gonna separate them. So the bombers go first and then the fighter. So we'll have the bomber there and the fighter there. Okay, for each task base task force, resolve bomber missions first, then fighter missions. For each end range air unit, roll 1d6. So these guys, now here at Robal, there's two bases. This base is for Port Moresby. This base is for the Solomons. And yes, they do have some, they have a couple of the same identifiers, but they're, they're treated completely separate. Okay, so these guys are gonna launch. They have a range of three, so they can make it there. So they have, this is a uh, fighter and another fighter. And this is a bomber and a bomber. Okay, so now what we do is all these units we have to roll on to see if they're actually going to, what their priorities are gonna be here. So we go to air mission determination table. Well, the first one is a naval air combat bomber and we roll the die. Okay, so here comes the die roll. And it is a six. And the six is he attacks the objective. Okay, so he's coming in at the objective. Okay, the next one is the land-based bomber. So we're gonna roll again. So we roll here and we get a one. And a one is no launch. 
So this bomber did not launch. He stayed back. So they did not send him out. Okay, we got one more bomber to do. And he gets a six. And he's coming to the objective. Okay. So we have two bomber groups coming to the objective base. Now we got to roll for the fighters. Okay. So the naval fighter, we're going to roll. And he gets a six. And a six is escort. So in this case, this set of A6M zeros is coming with the bomber groups. Okay, next is the A5Ms, which are clods. <laughs> They're not as good of a fighter. They're coming from, um, see what they're going to do. This is land fighters, and they roll a five, and they pulled escort. So they're, so far, they've got two bomber groups, two escort groups. Now we're going to roll for this last one, land-based fighter group. It's a three, and the three is also escort. So they got three escorts and two bomber groups. I got one fighter group up there. So this ain't looking real good so far. Okay. This could be tough. <laughs> All right. Okay. So the next thing we do now is we've got them determined what they're going to do. So we now move into up here on the board. Mutual combat segment. Okay. So on the board, we put our battle marker right here, showing that it's this battle right here. And then we're going to take all these planes that are involved. We're going to put them down here on this battle display. IGN force, U.S. Navy force. So my, my U.S. force is my P-39s, and they're flying cap and I've got fighters that are flying escort and escort and escort and my two bomber groups they are attacking the objective so they go there so that's where we're at okay now some of these combats happen simultaneously in other words the two fighter groups are going to hit and they and they begin their uh, combat simultaneously. So now we jump to the combat sequence of play and we conduct these steps in order. So the first one is air to air. Fire all air units, air combat factors at enemy units. Cap fighters may fire at attacking fighters and bombers. Attacking escort intruder fighters may only fire at cap fighters. And bombers may only fire at fighters. So I can choose with my P-39s. Do I want them to go after the fighters or the bombers? Well, I can tell you, I want them to go after the bombers. So they're going to attack the G4M Bettys. Okay. So my attack number is this top left. It's a 2. So I got to roll a 1 or a 2 to hit. So here we go. 1 or a 2. And he gets a three. Missed. Okay. That was my attack. Now, the Japanese fighters are jumping me. And they've got three rolls that they're going to get to do. The first one is the Navy fighters. And they need a three or less to hit. And he gets a six. Dodge them. Now come the A5Ms. And they need a two. So we roll a two. They hit my P4 or my P39. So my P39 goes down, and now he's on his damage side. So the difference there is now he's a one on his air attack. Okay, here come the fighter group from Rabal, and they're tough. These are guys are aces. There's <laughs> there are four or less to hit me. And they get, ooh, baby, it's a five, five. All right. So they didn't shoot me down. That's the good news.
Okay, so that's it for the air segment. Now we do anti-air step. Fire all ground and naval unit air combat factors at enemy air units. So they get to fire both of these air enemy air units. So my ground unit firing at the air is a three. So he needs a three or less to hit. Okay, so we're going to roll him at the G4 embeddies first. And he needs a three or less to hit. Here we go. Three or less. And he gets, ooh, he hit him. A one. So we hit the G4 embeddies. And it flips them over. Okay, that's a big hit. Now we're hitting at the Val Dive Bombers. Coming from the Junior. Okay. And we need a three. Oh, we got a six. We couldn't get the dive bombers, but we got the heavy bombers or the medium bombers. All right. Now we do. That was anti air. I don't have any ships there. Air naval step. So we don't have any naval air units firing at naval units. Air to ground. So fire all units at eligible ground targets. Okay. So here come the bombers. Now. This bomber, he needs, now he was going to be a four, but he got reduced. So now he's a two, so he has to have a two or less to hit. So here he goes. He fires, he needs a two or less. He got a four. Woohoo! Okay. Now the dive bombers, they're also a two. So they fire. Oops. And they get a four. All right. So no hits from the bombers. All right, there is no amphibious step. So now we become battle conclusion step. No matter the results of the six steps, all battles are complete. No multiple rounds. Return all surviving naval units to the space where the battle took place and surviving ground units remain in place. Determine if a side may have to retreat. We don't have to do that. Air units return to base in mutual return segment. Okay, so that's what we're doing now. We come up here on the board and we go to the mutual return segment. So my P-39 comes back and all these guys we're going to stack up over here. They all returned back to there and the combat marker comes off. Okay. So they actually in the return segment they go back to where they came from. So this bomber goes back to Rabal. And the Junio gets their fighter and bomber back to the Junio. They weren't damaged. And then these two fighters, they both go back also to Rabal. I'm going to put this damaged bomber on top just so I remember he's there. All right. That was the mutual return. Now we go IJN morale. So in the morale segment, it's only if there's carrier light carrier battleships eliminated um in that segment and there weren't so we move up and we do the ign logistics segment okay so on the logistics segment we must check ijn damage units see if they have been repaired and returned to play okay repairs for damaged ijn base units reduced land aircraft air units and carrier and carrier light carrier units only okay so the base wasn't damaged and the land aircraft reduced on the active wrap so that's that bomb group that we hit so there is an a uh, imperial japanese navy ijn repair table and down here it says reduced air unit we roll the die, a one to four, no effect. A five or six, it is repaired. Okay, so we're gonna roll. One to four, no effect. And we get, oh, six. <laughs> so the Japanese were able to repair their bomber. That's too bad. <laughs> yep, okay, they got them back. All right, and there's no other damage to take care of now because this is the yamamoto move we go back up and start it now with the solomons 
So here we go. We're back up here and we go to Solomon's now. So we're doing the same thing again. We flip this over and there's nobody to spot. Okay. So now we're going to roll to see what the, um, consult the task force movement. And here we have a, the fourth, um, carrier strike force, a support force and an invasion force. So we'll roll for the fourth carrier strike force first. And we're doing this over here on the movement table again. Okay, so we roll. Comes the roll. It is a one. And a one, that's good, is one space. So they only move, the task force moves one. Now we're going to roll for the support force. Okay, comes the support force. And they get a three. And a three for the support force is two spaces. So the support force is going to move two. One, two. It puts them outside of Rabal right now. Now we have the invasion task force. We're going to roll for it. And it is a two. And a two for the invasion force is one space. So it moves to here with the task force. Okay. So far, so good. <laughs> All right, that's the movement before we, and I should have moved up because uh, there was no search for them. Before we leave that, we have to pull the incident marker and see what happens. And they get incident submarine. Okay, so in the rule book, they specify what each one of these incidents means. Let me um, flip over. It's in uh, section 11. It's like the last thing in the uh, in the normal in the rules. Okay. So we have submarine U.S. Navy or IJN. If drawn during the IJN movement segment, which it was, an IJN task force may be subject to a submarine attack. If drawn during a U.S. Navy G3, then it's during my operations, then I would be under their, from their attack. Okay. So the task force in the space closest to the home base on the active route are spotted. So the support task force gets spotted. He's the closest one. We flip him over. So on the, on the counters, you have them like this, and then the other side, it says spotted. So he's now a spotted task force. The submarine saw him, and they've spotted him. Okay. One task force in that, so if there were multiples, we'd have to determine who it was. But this task force is subject to a submarine attack. And in the support group, because they're spotted now, we know what they are. So my support group has one ship. And it is, oh man, it's a battleship. So we now know that they have a battleship in the support group. Okay, so the battleship, boy, I'd love to sink this guy. Wouldn't that be great? So for each light carrier, carrier or destroyer unit roll a d6 the submarine attacks one naval unit we roll one d6 so they don't have any anti-submarine warfare with that battleship uh, task force they don't have the supporting groups with them so that was lucky that i caught him by himself okay submarine attacks one naval unit Roll 1d6. If the result is less than or equal to the number printed on the marker, that target receives one hit. Well, this marker, shucks, is a 1. So I got to roll a 1 to hit that, um, to resolve that hit. <coughs> All right. So here we go. We're rolling. I need a 1. Come on, baby. I need a 1. Yes, we need to get rid of a battleship. Come on, come on. One! 
Whoa! Whoa! I hit the battleship. Okay. <laughs> oh. All right. Now I got to see. I believe it says to go check to resolve that in 9.4.3. So 9.4.3. Applying hits. Enable unit. Locate the type. Yeah, that's what I thought. It's right here on the board. So, I have U.S. Navy attacking IGN Naval unit hit table. So now I'm going to roll. This is a battleship. It's the second row right here. A one, no effect. Two to four, damaged. Five to six, we sink him. Now, I needed a one. I got it. Now I need a five or six. <laughs> here we go. Five or six. Two. Okay, I damaged the battleship, though. All right. So we take the battleship marker. That's him. He's a 244. Four. And now he becomes. Ooh, I got to figure out what to do there with the battleship. Okay. So I damaged him. Caused the unit to be removed from the battle and placed in the appropriate damage to units display for IG. Okay. All right. So the battleship comes off. And there's a damaged unit for the Japanese Navy here. That's where he goes. The sport marker can come off right now because that task force is uh, eliminated right now. They don't have anybody in it. All right. So I got that task force is off of the board. Hey, my submarines came through for me. Woohoo! All right. That's the end of the move segment. Man, I got lucky on that deal. In fact, that was my U.S. Navy uh, reaction segment is now coming up. I don't have any carrier-based aircraft. I have a Task Force 17, which has the Lexington and the Yorktown and a, and a cruiser and a destroyer group with them down here at New Caledonia, but they're not in range. So I can't launch anybody one two three um i can put up a uh, combat air patrol so i think on the um lexington and the yorktown we will put up a uh, combat air patrol right here for this group just to make sure nothing weird happens and somebody gets over there but we're not spotted so i don't think i have to worry about worry about that Okay, IJN launch segment. So now we move this, move our marker up to that segment. Now we go back down here. Uh, let's see, their task forces are out of range, so they won't be doing anything. So the base is spotted right here, so they can come attack it. So I have to roll for these land-based uh, units right here. We have a G4M Betty and a G3M and we have a fighter group from Rabal. So they're going to launch and now we have to roll to see what they're going to do. So we start with the bombers. We start with the G4M. This is our air mission determination table. This is a land aircraft bomber. So one or two is a no launch. So here we go. One or two is a no launch. Five. Yep. He's coming to the objective. So he'll be coming here. And now we roll for the next one. Same thing, a one or two, no launch. Three. So both bomber groups are coming. And then the fighter group, let's see, he needs, let's see, a one or two, he's a cap. Three, four, five, he's escorting six, he's an intruder. And he gets a two. So he stayed in Rabal as cap, which... We'll put him out here, but I don't think it's going to matter.
Okay. <clears throat> so we're on our combat sequence of play now. We moved to mutual combat. And we're down here. Oops, right here at the Solomons. So the first thing we do is we move the two bomber groups over here. They're attacking. So they'll be right here. There is no air to air. We don't have anybody up there that's going to do anything. So that's where these guys are going to sit. Okay, so there's no air to air. So anti air. Okay, so unfortunately on the Solomons, my anti air is zero. So I don't have any anti air against those guys. So this unit is just a sitting duck. There's no air naval, so there's an air ground step. Okay, so the Japanese bombers are attacking. Okay, the first one is the G3M. He needs a three or less to hit. He gets a one. So they hit the... And that's it. They eliminated it. So that hit right there. And so we put this up here in the U.S. Navy eliminated units. Right here. So I lost that. I lost that one there. Okay. And that's the end of the combat. And they're all going to go back to their base and land. And the fighter's going to land. And my fighter caps are all going to go home and land back on their carriers. Nobody saw them. They were flying over the carriers. Okay, and that takes care of the mutual return segment. The Japanese morale. Now, the Japanese morale segment this time is going to have something because we got rid of a battleship. Okay, for each battleship eliminated since the last morale segment, you must make a morale check. Roll 1d6 and apply results. Total the number. Oh, he's not eliminated. He's damaged. So, you know what? This task force is... I'm going to leave this task force here right now. Because he may not be eliminated yet. He's a damaged unit. So we don't do the morale. Because he's only damaged. He has to be eliminated for us to do the morale check. Okay, the logistics segment then for the Japanese. So here we go with the IJN logistics segment. You must check damage units to see if they've been repaired and returned to play. Repair is for damaged base units, reduced LAC air units, and carrier and light carriers. So right now the battleship does not get repaired. So he just stays out right now. So he's out of the battle. <coughs> he's out of the battle. So he's not doing any, he's not able to do anything right now. Okay. Now that's the end of the Japanese segments. Now we go to the US Navy segment. So this is the first time we've been to this one. So we start with G1. So, if you guys were in the military, most of you are going to recognize G1, G2, G3, and G4. G1 are your organizational or administrative actions. So we have a choice. We can pick any one of these to do. We can reorganize the task force, create a new task force, recruit reinforcements, replace a naval um, air combat or aircraft, which we didn't replace a land aircraft from the d eliminated units, which we don't have, and replace a coastal defense unit. But I have to have a task force in the same space as the objective, which I do not have. So right now, I really don't have anything that's helping me there yet. So I think what I'm gonna do is I need to recruit some reinforcements. And the one I'm going to choose is the Royal Australian Air Force Bomber land-based land aircraft. I can place it in the Australia home base. So that's this guy right here. He's in that green instead of the blue. He's a reinforcement. And I'm putting him right, oops, right down here in Australia. So we now have him active right there. Okay. 
And this task force that's down here, this task force 44, is one ship and it's a cruiser group. So he's kind of a weak task force, but we may need him um, with this covering an invasion force uh, where we got beat up a little bit. Okay, that's our US Navy action. So now we do intelligence actions. So we can do different things. Naval air search. We can select a carrier, a battleship, or a cruiser unit. Select a single space within two spaces of that unit. Okay, I don't have any of those there. I can do a seaplane search with my U.S. Navy um, and select a single space within three spaces of that unit. Well, one, two, three, I don't have anybody there. He's in Australia. So I don't have anything there. So I have signals intelligence, and that's what I'm going to do. And what that says is I can all Japanese cat carrier task forces on the U.S. Navy side of the Japanese defense perimeter are spotted. So if anybody was outside of this perimeter, those carrier forces, I could show them as spotted right away. But I don't have that. So the other object that I can do is I can randomly pick the next marker and put it on the board and we're going to know what's going to happen on the next turn. That's our intelligence. So we have a marker and it's going to be, oh, victory spirit. So we'll go through that and for the next turn, but we'll put it up here. It'll be the next one that's going to come into play. Actually, that's a good time to get that because it's early and it never comes back into the game. There's two of them in there. That's one of them that gets, I love seeing that one come out early. Oh, and this incident goes back into the cup. Okay, that's my G2 move. Now we go to G3 operations. Up here, G3 operations. Okay, now, we can do naval operation. I can select one route and move all, any and all US Navy task force and or independent naval units. In that, I can tell you, I don't even have to look at this. That's what I'm doing. Cause I gotta, I'm gonna try to protect the Solomons right here from this group. Now, task force 17 has an admiral with them, a leader, and it is Fletcher. He set plus one. What that does is it's going to give him an extra move space if I need it. But honestly, I don't need it because they can move two spaces anyway because they don't have a battleship in this task force. So he's going to move one, two, and we'll put them right outside the Solomons right here. And that's where they're going to be. So now I have my task force up here to see if I can get after his now. And we're getting close enough that we can maybe spot them. And if they move up here, we'll really get a chance to have a little action on the next turn, if the next turn creates that game down here. Okay, that's G3. So now we go to G4. And as you know, you or might know, G4 is your supply. So in G4, we can repair damaged naval units. We can repair a damaged naval aircraft. Okay. We can repair a damaged land aircraft. Designate one U.S. controlled IGN objective space or home base containing reduced. So I have a choice. I have a carrier that's over here. And I can roll to get him repaired. And it takes a four to six. It gets him out, gets him repaired. I can roll for this damaged air unit, which is my P-39s. I need a three to six to repair them. And that I'm going to do because I'm just trying to give myself some support up here. Um, because I haven't been able to move forces in there to help him yet. So we're going to roll. I need a three to six and he gets a one. So I did not, I did not repair 
my P39. And quite honestly, a one on the ship wouldn't have repaired it either. So one was just an ugly roll. Okay. <laughs> All right. Administrative phase. Okay. So on the administrative phase, we go through and any ships that were any task force that were spotted become unspotted. So we flip him back over. We take this marker, Yamamoto, and he now goes into the IGN operations markers already played, and you're supposed to put them face down. I guess so you can't remember <laughs> what was played. All right. And I'm just doing a quick, real quick check. Um, to make sure I didn't miss anything, but I believe um, that that is it for my just checking real quick. Sorry, I just want to make sure I'm not missing one. But I think that's all we do there, is we just check to make sure that there's nothing else there. And we're all set up for the next turn. Okay, so <laughs> this is about the time limit that I was looking for. Um, I know that they call these game turns in the rules, but I like to call them um, not so much turns, or, or, but... Um, rounds so we did this round of action right here that happened now okay so we're set for the next one we know it's going to be the victory spirit and victory spirit you have to total the number of carriers and battleships eliminated units damage which we don't have any there is a damaged um japanese we roll a die and it's going to determine some things. But the nice thing is, they don't do anything else. So I get a chance to make some moves, to, to go through my phases and help myself with some moves down here. So I can repopulate down here. Um, I can, uh, or I can get another task force moving. There's, there's several things that I can do here to help myself. Nothing's happened up here yet. All my actions down here. You know, the question is, do I need to send another task force all the way down here to help these guys? You know, I got a lot going on. Um, you know, so these are the these are the questions that you got to that you got to decide. Okay. All right. I think that's uh, going to wrap it though for today. We're at uh, almost forty-five minutes. So. Uh, it gives you a little flavor for the first round that we did. It was kind of an odd. I pulled Yamamoto and um, it it's acted like two two turns because I had two different things happening at one time. Uh, normally you'd only have one or the other to deal with. So, <coughs> excuse me, that, that worked out uh, pretty good for this first turn getting two moves in. Okay, I'm gonna call it. Hey, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. I'd appreciate it. And if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. And we'll be back for the next round. And we'll see how the game continues to develop. All right, everybody. I'll see you later. Have a good one.